greetings to the household. We are going to continue on the theme of being trained and equipped as we looked in Hebrews 5 verse 14 that says, But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained their senses to distinguish good from evil. We spoke a couple of weeks ago about being trained in God's gym. How he brings us to maturity through teaching us to discern good from evil. The way we discern that is from constant use, being trained in the word, being familiar with that which is what God says. Now in this world, there's much opinion and there's much allure. The term allure speaks of that which attracts attention because it looks so good. The old adage that says all that glitters is not gold. The world offers a lot that looks like gold. Gold in this sense being the purity of what is truth. The purity that comes from God. So much opinion in the world is stated as fact and even fact in fact does not necessarily mean it is the truth. There are facts that are true and then there is that which is of the spirit of truth. And as we've been talking, we've been speaking about this war of words that the enemy will wage against the saints in these last times. It will be a war of opinions that polarize. And the word used is polemics, polemos, in which we see polarization and polemics, the, the arguing of words. And we've used these terms recently in the last few years. It's been, become quite a popular phrase, fake news. Fake news is really everyone's opinion twisted in a way to make their opinion seem as if it is the truth and the only perspective from which to see it. Ignoring all other facts, ignoring all other points of view and every other perspective that might give a better picture of the full truth. Well, we live in a world of fake news. And in this war that the enemy wages against the saints that scripture says he will win. Polemos, not strateo, not a physical battle of killing and um, armies and those type of wars. But it is a war of words. Polemos is the word used. Scripture says that the enemy will win this war. It's quite common for all of us to understand these terms politically correct, socially acceptable, all of these things that are very important in the systems of this world. There's this term that's become very vogue recently. Woke or wokeness. In fact, uh, it was included in the Oxford Dictionary 2017 as a byword for social awareness. Um, and particularly used by political activists in the Black Lives Matter movement. And to be woke is to be aware of all of the nuances pertaining to that which is the agenda of the Black Lives Matter movement. The Urban Dictionary 
has a lot of comments in there and of course it's not a proper dictionary it's different people's rendition of what a word could mean in in use today but some of the definitions in the urban dictionary of woke or wokeness is fake awareness the other one is self-righteousness masquerading as enlightenment self-righteousness masquerading as enlightenment how true that is that that which the world thinks is truth is really a masquerade a self-righteous masquerade taken from a perspective of what suits me what suits my agenda what suits my soul and its desires so let's ask the question for example is it true that black lives do matter the answer of course black lives matter is the movement black lives matter aligned with the spirit of truth well clearly not because there are some strong proponents of black lives matter that hate absolutely hate those that are not black is that the spirit of truth no so is it true that black lives matter yes but is it the spirit of truth no it's contrary to the spirit of truth and as we discuss this today i want you to become aware of the discernment that the lord is training us in through frequent use and familiarity with the word of God and more importantly being familiar and well acquainted with the person of God so that we can come to an understanding of the truth many call themselves Christian and even brothers years ago there was this one guy that calls himself a brother I guess certainly calls himself a Christian that attacked me personally and reported me to Malema and instructed Malema to to get him because he's a racist well it seems funny now even if he was correct even if I was a racist even if I am a racist which of course I don't have to defend but even if it was true that he's his facts were correct Peter Snayman is a racist report him to Malema to get this guy is what he did operating in the spirit of truth no so even if he was acting in what was factually true as a disclaimer it's not obviously but even if it was was he operating in the spirit of truth no so you can be factually true but contrary to the spirit of truth and in fact that is the spirit of antichrist if you hate your brother or those that you call brother how can the spirit of god be in you the spirit of god is love so in these days discernment and being able to discern will be very important john 8 verse 32 says you will know the truth you will know the truth and knowing the truth will be what sets you free that word aletheia is the word for truth which means reality or the opposite to an illusion the truth is not an illusion 
it is in fact what is most real. So when we speak of reality and what is most real, we have to be aware of what is true in the spirit. And scripture says that God gives delusion to those who refuse to know the truth. Second Thessalonians 2, let's read from verse 10 to 12. And with every wicked deception directed against those who are perishing, because they refused the love of the truth that would have saved them, but they refused the love of the truth. For this reason, God will send them a powerful delusion so that they believe the lie. They think it's truth. They call it truth. They say they live their own truth. They live by what's fact published in fake news, but they refuse the love of the truth, which I'm going to say a few times today because I want you to get it, is a person. Truth is a person and they refuse the love of the truth. And so God sends them a powerful delusion in order that judgment may come upon all who have disbelieved the truth and delighted in wickedness. The word delusion is the word plane, which means a depart from what God says is true, which has a result. It's not just a depart from what God says is true. There's also a result. It results in wandering. Not wandering as in I wonder what that is, which I suppose is part of what delusions cause, that you're always wondering what is. But a wandering as in the desert, as in they were wandering in the desert with an A, not with an O. And so God gives them this fate. You refuse to love the truth, so I'll give you over to this delusion, which departs from what God is saying is true, but it results in you always wandering in a desert, in a slumber, delusion. Now you get the other word, which is similar, illusion, which means you deceive by what you see. An illusion is you're deceived by what you see, but delusion is deceived by what you believe. It's what your heart receives, what you believe to be true. You are deluded. And we must learn to discern, Scripture says, by constant use of the word. We must learn to discern by training in the word. There's a lot of the spirit of truth written in the book of John and the various books of John. But let's read John 16 from verse 13. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he is a person will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and he will declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me, Jesus says. By taking what is mine and disclosing it to you. So the Holy Spirit comes and takes that which is of Christ. The mysteries, the wonder, the deep secrets. The deep truth. Remember Jesus himself said. I am the truth. He didn't, he didn't say I come to speak the truth or I come to share the truth as information. He says, I, the person, am the truth, the way and the life. It carries on in John 14 verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We'll be reminded in a few minutes what is the greatest of the commandments that Jesus gave. 
to love. We'll get there in a minute. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. So the Father gives you his Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. Forever. As an advocate. Now, the Spirit of Truth, which is the Spirit of God, cannot be received by the world. So it says, the world cannot receive him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you do know him. For he abides with you and will be in you. You know him. So there are things that the world just cannot see. There is truth that the world cannot perceive, cannot grasp. They do not love the truth. They do not want to know the truth because the truth is a person that they reject. So they are given to delusion, to wandering. And I want to say this over and over again. For the spirit of truth, he is given. He is the person of God. He is a person. The spirit of truth is a person that is given to us. Always. And so one of the key markers of the spirit of truth in operation in our life, if you need to discern, this is going to be one of the key markers. If you love me, keep my commandments. And what is that commandment? What is the greatest of the commandments? 1 John 4 verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. And knows God. Yeah, we come into the understanding of knowing God. Knowing God would be you love. If you know God, you love. If you do not know God, you do not love. If you do not love, you do not know God. If you know God, you will receive the Spirit, which is from God, the Spirit of Truth. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So, what does this have to do with truth? If you look at the previous verses before what I just read to you, if we read from verse 1, 1 John chapter 4 verse 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world, by this you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ is not from God. First indicator. Christ be revealed. The Spirit of Truth reveals Christ. That which is not of the spirit of truth does not want Christ to be revealed. And so every fact that is offered by a spirit of deception as fake news, its design is to keep Christ from being revealed. If Christ were re revealed, truth would be known. And there would be love. Let's go on. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Which you have heard is coming and which is already in the world at this time. You little children are from God and have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he 
who is in the world. They are of the world. That is why they speak from the world's perspective. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deception. Very plain. There it is in scripture. This is how we know the spirit of truth. And the opposite is also a spirit, a spirit of deception. So we see in opposition to the person, the spirit of truth. We see a spirit at work. It's called the spirit of deception. So back to 1 John 2 verse 4. If anyone says, I know him, does not keep his commandments, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. So if you say you know God, that word know really means experientially know. Not know of him, but know by first hand acquaintance. If you know God, if you know God, if you know God, not only will you keep his commandments, but you will know the truth. The truth will be discerned by those who know God. And the acid test for what is truth is, is their love. If there's no love, there's no truth. Thessalonians 2 verse 9 speaks of a deception, a great deception that will come with the coming of the lawless one. So let's just read verse 9 and 10. The coming of the lawless one will be accompanied by the working of Satan with every kind of power, sign and false wonder. And verse 10 says, and with every wicked deception. So the lawless one, we know the word lawless is a nomos. Nomos being the law, God's order. Nomos, a means against the law. A nomos, that which is against God's order, that which is against God's law. Where lawlessness is their love decreases. Matthew 24 verse 10. And then many will fall away and they will betray one another and will hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and will lead many astray. This theme is so prevalent in scripture. You can't ignore it and you can't say it's not there. You can't not see it. Verse 12, Matthew 24. And because lawlessness is to be multiplied, the love of many will grow cold. So where lawlessness increases, love decreases. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership can righteousness have with wickedness? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? Now, this unequally yoked, it's been used many times in people getting married and counsel towards those getting married. Do not be unequally yoked. Don't, if you're a believer, don't be married to an unbeliever. Don't be unequally yoked, which is true. Absolutely. But it's not all that is meant. This is got to do with all your associations within the world. Do not yoke yourself with that which is not truth, which cannot understand truth, cannot receive truth because it refuses to retain God in their knowledge. Do not be unequally yoked because you are righteous in Christ and they are wicked. By definition, scripture says they are wicked. What partnership is there? What fellowship? Is there if you walking in the light with darkness? 
So don't try and impress the world. Don't try and compromise by the world. And certainly, for goodness sake, certainly don't try and find wisdom, counsel and truth from the world. By what truth do they live? The world lives in what they now call, I live my own truth. Which means to them, it's a relative term. Truth is relative. It's what I want it to be. What works for me. What works best for what I want. That's relative and that's my truth. But truth is not relative. Truth is absolute. Truth is a person. So, we are not like the world, living our own truth, and we're not from the world, and we're not partnered in association with the world. We're not trying to fit in with the world, we're not trying to impress the world. And my counsel to you is don't compromise your access to truth. And your understanding of what is truth. By entertaining the wisdom of this world. As if it has any value for you to know truth. The spirit of truth is incompatible with the spirit of the world. Now because you are of God. Because you are the spirit of truth and the world does not want to know the truth. It's rejected him. Because of that, you will be hated. You will be rejected. You will be mocked. You will be ridiculed. You will be despised. And you will even be persecuted. In fact, he has a promise. If you want to, you can put it on your bathroom mirror or on your fridge door. It's... 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. In this charismatic season, people like to claim all these promises that they want. He has a promise for you. It says, Indeed, all who desire to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. That's a good promise because there it is. It's promising you will. If you do desire to live a godly life. Now remember we spoke two weeks ago about being trained up in godliness. So if you desire to live this life, you will be persecuted. It says verse 13. While evil men and impostors go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. So remember, the world's not only trying to deceive you. They themselves are deceived. They are being deceived constantly. There's no truth. There's no anchor for their soul. There's nothing that they can build on that is solid. They like ships in the dark in a storm being tossed about by angry waves. There's no foundation because there's no truth. So they are being deceived. But as for you, verse 14 says, continue in the things you have learned. And he goes on and to say, I'm the example. The one that you can learn from, you can see it in me. But he says, continue in the things that you have learnt and firmly believed since you know from whom you have learnt them. There are fathers in your life that are example to you. Paul says, I'm a father to you. I'm example. You can see it in my life. He says to him later, the things you've learned from me, you can entrust to other faithful men that they'll be able to carry that over to others as well. Verse 15, from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. We see this theme again of being trained up in the Word. From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And here we get to the Scripture that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. All Scripture is God-breathed. And is useful for instruction, for conviction, for correction, and here it is, for training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be complete. So this is how God supplies us completeness. 
This is how he fulfills us. This is how he stocks us with all that is needed for life and godliness. He makes us complete, fully equipped for every good work. What I'm saying to you is that to understand that which is true, it must be aligned with the spirit of truth. It can't just be information that seems correct. It has to be from the spirit of truth. It has to be aligned with the spirit of God, the spirit of truth. And so, the markers. It must be out of love. If it's not operating out of love, it's not truth. It's not the spirit of truth. And love, as we know, sees the other as God sees them. When you enter into how God sees another, you can love them as God loves them. So remember the greatest commandment? Jesus says, love. Love God. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But Jesus said, a new commandment I'm giving you. Don't just love as you love yourself. Love as I love. That's the new commandment. So when we're operating out of love, there's no truth if you're not seeing someone as God sees them. There's no truth. When someone operates towards you and is not aligned with the spirit of truth, they can't see you as God sees you, then you don't have to receive that as truth. Certainly not God's truth. Another thing is, you know it is true when the perspective can be seen from an eternal point of view. It's viewed from the throne of God. It's viewed from seated with Christ in heavenly places, position. It's viewed with spiritual eyes and not with carnal eyes or soulish eyes or physical eyes. It's not just what we deduce from what we see. It's seeing as God sees from eternal perspective. You will know also that it's not a spirit of truth when it sounds good, but it's not from someone that has the spirit of God. So if it is evident that they are not born of the Spirit, if the fruit of the Spirit is not evident in their life, if they're not operating by the fruit of the Spirit, then it's not truth. It might be factual, it might be factually true, but it is not the truth when it does not operate out of the Spirit of God with a manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, including love, which is patient and kind and all of these things. But the fruit of the Spirit is much more than that. It is also long-suffering. It's The fruit of the Spirit includes full expression of who God is. God is Spirit. And that's how we know that we are dealing with what is true because it's so clearly evident aligned with the person of who God is. You also know that it's not truth if it's generated from what someone's soul wants. If it's concocted or fake news or is twisted or is manipulated because of an agenda that we have or that someone has. If it's from what the soul wants, it can't be truth. Because truth is only discerned by the Spirit as God reveals Himself by Spirit. And so we have many ways in which we can discern and walk in truth. Not be led astray and not be deceived. If you know the person of God, you will not be deceived. Someone can come to me and say, Peter, your father 
says this and this of you and your father thinks that and that of you and your father did that and that. And I know my father. So I won't be fooled into believing nonsense about what my father thinks about me, what my father says about me or what my father did because I know my father. I know his nature. I know his character. And as soon as they speak, I know immediately whether that is my father or not that they're talking about. I know if that's an accurate reflection of what he might have said because I know him so well. And that is, that's how it is with our Heavenly Father. When we know him, when we know God, when we know the person of God, we will not be deceived by a spirit of deception because we know he who is the spirit of truth. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. The word truth, whatever is true, aletheia, or whatever is true, alethus, which means it's not concealed, it's not hidden, and it is attested because it has been tested. It's the absolute truth. Whatever is honorable means it has gravity. It has it is viewed as majestic. It's honorable. Those who are of kingly character carry and display that which is majestic. Those that operate from the throne of God operate in that which can be viewed as majestic. That which doesn't come from the throne of God has no majesty in it. Whatever is right and this right is connected to righteousness. It's that which is approved by God. It's that which is conformed to his standards. That's the thing we should be thinking about. That which conforms to God's standard. Which is approved by the person of God. Whatever is pure. This word pure has an understanding of being uncontaminated not mixed with or defiled by the world, the thinking of the world, other agendas, the soul, that which is carnal. It is pure because it comes from the throne. It comes from God himself. It's undefiled. Whatever is lovely. The word lovely is made up of two words. Phileo, which is love. It's how you love a brother. Pros means towards or in favor of. So it's prosphilio. Which means worth the effort to embrace. Whatever is worth the effort to embrace. Think on that. Whatever is lovely. Whatever is admirable. The word euphemos. Which means whatever can be spoken well of. Whatever can be spoken of in a kindly spirit. So admirable has got to do with the word euphemos carries the, the understanding of talking, speaking, what is spoken of. Your speech, let it be admirable. Let your speech be in a kindly spirit or in the spirit of God. Let your speech speak well of. My grandmother was so good at that. I never ever heard her say a bad word about anyone in her entire life. She always just said kind things or nice things about people. She always said, if you've got nothing good to say, rather say nothing. But whatever is admirable... Think on these things. Whatever is excellent. 
if it is excellent or praiseworthy. So that word excellent is gracious and enriches life. If it enriches life, it's life-giving. It's excellent. And it's praiseworthy as it relates to that which is God's will. It's not praiseworthy if it's unaligned with that which is God's will. Think on these things. And so God brings us to a place of training where we learn to be proficient through practice. As we trained to hear what comes from God. What is God saying? What is God doing? Because we see with spiritual eyes. And as we hear it, faith comes. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And that's not just faith coming by hearing a preacher. It's by hearing God speaking through what is being said. Hearing God. You hear God speak to you. That's how faith comes. And you can lie down in that conviction of who God is. That faith. You can lie down and rest in that knowing God is able. He is the reward of those who seek him. He has this thing. He will take it and he will lead and guide you in all truth. Truth is a person. It is the person of God. If you know truth, you have to know God. Know God, know truth. That's K-N-O-W. It's also true that if no God, as in N-O, no God in your life, there will be no truth in your life. No God, no truth. And God will lead and direct us by His Spirit that has been given to us to lead us in all truth. To take that which is of Christ and make it known to us. May it be so evident in our lives, within this household, that we walk in truth. That we have been trained through practice, proficiency of hearing, listening and obeying. To know God, to know that which is of God. And discern the spirit to know what is deception. So we will not be deceived. This is a day of training of the more than overcomers, the training of the champions, the training of those elite who are to rule as kings and priests unto our God, who are the majesty putting on display the character of God. This is the day. That the Lord is equipping us. Grace and peace to you.